Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna break down what happens when you start training your tendons for one week, one month, or one year. Now, a lot of you guys are strength conditioning professionals, personal trainers, or just familiar with working out already, and you already know how to build a bicep muscle with muscle protein synthesis. But what you might not know as much about is how to build tendon strength. As a strength coach and doctor of physical therapy, I've helped hundreds of athletes build strong tendons. I've also dug deep into the research on this to solve my own tendon pain and keep it from coming back for years now. So I'm gonna show you as much of what I know as I can. Here's how this video will break down. First, we'll explore the science of building tendon strength and collagen synthesis and how to start that process within just one week of training. Then we'll discuss the specific exercises like isometrics and heavy slow resistance to maximize tendon and ligament strength over a month of training. Finally, we'll wrap up with the specific exercises exercises and sets and reps that you'll need to maintain strong tendons over a year. Okay, let's start with what you can expect with one week of tendon training. And we're going to start off by assuming that there's some tendon pain or damage that you're dealing with. Because chances are if you click this video, you have some tendon pain or you have had tendon pain. And honestly, I know that tendon pain can be incredibly frustrating and it's obviously much better to just have strong tendons. So here's what your tendon looks like. This is muscle and this is your tendon connecting it to bone. Within your tendon, you have healthy tendon, but you also have an area of damage. Now in the research, there are fancier images like this that show the biology of what's going on, but we're gonna keep it simple right here. This is going to help us understand what is and what is not effective tendon training. And effective tendon training can include two primary methods. First is isometrics, holding a static muscle contraction. For example, a leg extension isometric. And second would be heavy, slow resistance, moving through an exercise. Again, for example, a leg extension, slowly lifting up and down. In either case, what's happening is that your muscle is slowly contracting and your tendon is slowly lengthening. This provides a really important stress relaxation response to this area of damaged tendon that causes it to regenerate collagen and regrow. And I'll show you specific images of an NBA athlete's patellar tendon going from damage to healed using this mechanism in just a minute. For now, it's just important to know that to stimulate this damaged area of tendon to regrow, we need to use isometric or heavy slow controlled resistance exercises. Okay, but what exercises, sets and reps and weight is right for your tendon pain? Well, the research shows us that we need to check the box on three important things, time, tension, and volume. Time, meaning that it takes at least three seconds to start the process of stress relaxation where the tendon slowly lengthens to stimulate collagen synthesis. It takes closer to 30 to 45 seconds to max this process out and stimulate the most tendon regrowth. Second is tension. And tension means that if we're not using a strong enough muscle contraction, then we're not gonna stimulate healing and growth. The threshold for this, based on a large body of research, seems to be around a 70% contraction strength or about a seven out of 10 intensity. We'll talk more about how to get that later on. And the third thing that we need for growth is volume. If we do everything right with a strong muscle contraction, the right amount of time, say 30 seconds to stimulate the tendon, but we only do that once a week, it just won't be enough of a stimulus to really rebuild that tendon. The appropriate volume does depend on several factors, but the general guideline that I give is approximately three to six hard challenging sets every other day or about three to four times per week. So to summarize, we need three things to simulate tendon growth, time, tension, and volume. If you get these three things right, then you'll be on track to actually building a strong tendon. It's also important to mention here that there are a lot of distractions that do not build tendon strength. One is plyometrics. These movements occur too fast to build tendon strength. They are great for improving athleticism, but they don't reach the time thresholds to stimulate tendon growth. Second would be light loads. Like we said, there's a minimum amount of weight or effort that is required to build stronger tendons. A lot of people fail to build tendon strength because they just don't find the right exercises that are challenging the tendon consistently and long enough to stimulate growth. And there are several others as well, including ultrasound, ice, massage gun, foam rolling, and stretching. So the typical protocol that you see online or that you may have already tried of low load band exercises, stretching, ultrasound, massage, ice, whatever, it takes a lot of time and it costs you a lot to do it, but it doesn't build any meaningful tendon strength. That's why we're exploring a different approach. Okay, so now let's get into the specific protocols that actually do build tendon strength, starting with one week of training. So 
Let's assume that you found two exercises that you can do for your injured tendon, whether that's leg extension isometrics and wall sits for your patellar tendon, straight leg and bent knee calf raises for your Achilles tendon, isometric supination and wrist extension for tennis elbow, or a long lever bridge and a hamstring curl for hamstring tendons. So you have your exercises and now you're doing the basic protocol checking all three boxes. Time, 30 to 45 second controlled isometric contractions or slow controlled movement up and down, check. Tension, building up to a seven out of 10 intensity or a 70% contraction strength and truly pushing this hard, check. And volume, targeting three sets of each exercise three times per week, check. So you've checked all three boxes. After one week, you can expect a few things. First is potentially an analgesic or a temporary pain reducing effect. And this may or may not actually occur depending on a number of factors. I've had a lot of cases where a weightlifter, football player, or a basketball player that I've trained had irritable knee pain and I gave them 30 second knee extension isometrics before practice or lifting. In a lot of the cases, this actually does reduce pain temporarily and they can get through a game or a workout with less pain. In other cases though, when tendon pain is more severe or long lasting, training can actually temporarily increase the pain level. Now this isn't always a bad thing because you do have to load it and get this healing process started, but I do put some guardrails on it. Try to keep the pain four out of 10 or less and make sure that the pain returns to your baseline within 24 hours. If it's not, then you may need to build up more slowly or try different exercises or positions. Overall though, with one week of training, you're really just testing the waters here. In really mild cases, you may get some relief and be able to do your normal activities, but in many cases, it's gonna take quite a bit longer. And in terms of the physiology of the tendon, within the first week, there are some interesting things going on acutely. One of the main ones being that we're pushing water out of the tendon. And this fluid movement actually seems to be quite an important factor in initiating collagen synthesis and the rebuilding process. And it starts within your first week of training. Okay, so that all happens within one week, but now let's move on to what happens with one month of tendon training. Now you've been consistently doing 10 to 15 minutes of tendon training at the start of your training session three to four times per week. You've even progressed the intensity on some exercises. Maybe you were doing slow controlled 30 second split squats holding 30 pound dumbbells. Now you've worked up to holding 40 pound dumbbells. Unfortunately though, this is where a lot of people get frustrated and they quit because with anything else like muscles or cardio training, by this point you would see some changes. But tendon is obnoxiously slow. And the truth is that the research often looks like this. It takes up to three months to see significant changes in tendon stiffness. Trust me, I would love to make a video with absolutely no evidence and just hype you up about really fun looking exercises and tell you that your tendons will be bulletproof if you buy my program. But I think that you deserve the real data and the real data shows us that tendons take time to adapt. Even if you get all three things right that we know build tendon strength, time, tension, and volume, plan to spend three months to get the full results and see significant tendon gains. Okay, now let's move on to my favorite part, one year of tendon training, because this is where we can really start to see significant improvements and lasting changes. This is some fascinating research, and I want you to check out this image of a patellar tendon of an NBA athlete. I want you to look at the white spot at the top of the image A. That's tendinopathy, or the area of damaged tendon. Believe it or not, the rehab world for years thought it was impossible to heal that area of damaged tendon. The thought was that you should just try to build strong tendon around it and kind of ignore the area of damage. But as you can see from image B and image C, in this case, the tendon actually did heal and that white spot is gone. It was replaced with healthy tendon, which you could see as black. In this case, image B was after one year of training and image C was after 18 months of training. And here's another view of that tendon building up again over 18 months. A shows a weak, small tendon and by 12 and 18 months later, you can see a much stronger and thicker tendon. And this was done with all the principles that we've been talking about so far. Adequate time with 30 to 45 second isometric contractions, adequate tension with challenging exercises and an athlete who put effort in into strong muscle contraction, and then also consistently adding weight and pushing exercises hard to at least that seven out of 10 intensity. 
And then lastly, enough volume, training three times per week consistently for over a year. So while tendon pain can be incredibly frustrating, if you put in the work consistently for long enough, you can rebuild a really strong tendon. If you get the time, tension, and volume right and find two to three exercises that work for you, then you're ahead of 95% of people when it comes to building strong tendons. So rather than filling this video with a whole bunch of different exercises and stretches and things that you could do, I just wanna focus on the one most important thing. And that is again, getting two to three really solid challenging exercises for or your area of tendon pain. And then simply being really consistent with those and challenging them over time. So whatever your area of tendon pain is, think about an exercise that can load that area safely to stimulate this healing process and make sure that you can do it consistently for long enough to truly reach tendon rebuilding and lasting pain reduction. Okay, with all that said, I wanna mention a few extra points that I think are important. First is if you're just maintaining or prehabbing, you really only need to pick one exercise and do three sets of 30 seconds. Doing this two or three times a week keeps your tendon strong. Even once there's no longer any tendon pain, I think it's a good idea to keep this in your training. It really isn't that much work. Just find one good exercise to keep in your regular training program. Secondly, make sure you're modifying any irritating factors. I've worked with a lot of basketball and football players who have to dial back their jumping and their practice time to get this under control. If you keep doing a little bit of work, but then going hard at a practice and blowing it back up, you're going to keep pushing yourself into this cycle where you're pushing back to square one. So while you're in that rebuilding process, make sure that you're limiting anything that's setting you back, at least as much as you can. And then lastly, consistent training is a really big factor here. When your training is inconsistent and you don't have a warm-up plan or a progression plan, it can be easy to irritate your tendons. Getting on a consistent training program and having consistent protein intake as well can both be really helpful in this process of rebuilding your tendon strength. If it resonated with you and was helpful, make sure you hit that like button. You can subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll leave a link in the description below to our training programs and our sponsors if you do want to support the channel. Thanks so much for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.